Communism, a presentation by Mandy Yang and Shristi Palomar and Irene Chang. The historical origin of communism or where communism all began. The communist concept first originated from Karl Marx and Friedrich Engel and was largely described in the Communist Manifesto of 1848. The Communist Manifesto was an outline of an ideal communist society, but it also contained trademark characteristics of socialism. It theorized that all private ownership should end and that everything belonged to everybody. The social At the time, socialism and communism were two phrases that were used interchangeably and often mixed. The key texts of communism include the Communist Manifesto, the Critique of the Gotha Program, State and Revolution, the German Ideology, and Das Kapital. But, however, Communist Manifesto was the main text off of which modern-day communist countries are based off of. The main idea of communism is that everything belonged to everybody, or that everybody would give the government what they could and everybody would receive what they needed. The causes and effects of communism are, are many, but the few key points of communism are mentioned here. For example, the main cause of communism is the suppression of the working class. The working class, as Karl Marx and Friedrich Engel both saw, were largely suppressed by the, the richer middle class and upper class people. The effects are far more drastic. The, it results in the lack of technological innovation, a decline of the economy, and everybody becoming, as Roosevelt once said, equally poor. The idea of because everybody would receive what they needed and nobody would be pressured to create more and develop more, there would be no technological innovation, and therefore it results in decline of economy, as history has shown us time and time again. The Goods and Bads of Communism in a communist society, the distinctions between intellectual and manual labor will be eliminated due to the fact that everyone has the same property. In the structure, everyone is asked to contribute to the society and employed in some way, and for the unemployed, the government guarantees you that the basics of life will be provided. The rural and urban will have less gap in between due to the equal share of wealth and rate of development, and there wouldn't be inherited money to give certain people an advantage, so everyone gets the same chance. However, in a communist system, people's voices are hard to be heard, since the government controls their property and voice. The goal of communism is to have people work towards common goals and needs, so people are not free to pursue their own interests. Oppositions are not allowed, therefore discouraging the free flow of ideas. For the people, there are rarely any contact with the outside that wasn't screened by the government first. They are purposely kept uninformed for the benefit of the society. The government could also place limits on how much everyone earns, and this prevents overall growth because there is no motivation to do more than minimum. Examples, China and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. In 1949, the People's Republic of China was founded by a longtime member of the Chinese Communist Party, Mao Zedong. Early on, Zedong was highly influenced by the economic and political ideals of USSR leader Joseph Stalin. In 1955, Zedong sought to distance China from the USSR. Rather than industry, Zedong emphasized the farming sector of the economy to prevent China from becoming financially dependent on the Soviet Union. During an era known as the Great Leap Forward, Zedong's government created People's Communes in which the government seized landowner property for agricultural activity and placed unreasonably high production demands upon workers. During this time, pay was also equalized among members of the workforce. The resulting economic chaos caused by a lack of work incentive and inability to supply demand ultimately reversed these decisions. Communes were reorganized as wages became performance-based, thus prompting China's shift to a more socialist state. Post-Russian Revolution, the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party was created. The Bolsheviks of the RSDWP eventually split from the group, establishing what would become the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The CPSU wanted to establish an economy in which the proletariat was controlled by the government in order to prevent classism. By 1925, the CPSU became the dominating political party of the USSR. Under Joseph Stalin, collectivization stripped peasants of their land and reorganized the area into farms called colcuses. By the late 20th century, Western socialist economies began to undermine the strength of the CPSU. In 1990, CPSU leader Mikhail Gorbachev was forced to restructure the organization of the USSR's economy in order to fend off growing pressures to conform to Western economic systems. In August 1991, communist radicals staged a coup against Gorbachev's regime, which although failed, did mark the decline of the USSR as a communist state. Our group concluded that the best solution to the issues that arise from industrialization would be a combination of capitalism and socialism. Capitalism encourages economic independence, which in turn incentivizes people to work out of their own interests. In theory, workers reap as much as they sow. However, in practice, capitalism also gives way to monopolies and corporate abuses against employees who are overworked and underpaid. Socialism addresses issues of class inequality perpetuated in industrial economies through the organization of workers' unions and allowance of government intervention on behalf of the working class.